All right, my guest needs no introduction, but why don't we give him one anyway. In his 28th season here at the helm of BG Baseball, three-time MAC Coach of the Year, seven conference championships, and on the cusp of the exclusive 700 win club, head coach Danny Schmitz joins me now. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Leo. Great to, great to be here, and thanks for having me. Well, absolutely. Now, I know you're not a big touchy-feely, emotional guy, but I read those numbers off. And 21 wins away from 700 wins. I mean, those numbers got to do something for you. Well, uh, I guess what it uh, what hits me is just we've had a lot of great players, you know, and I've been very fortunate uh, over my 28 years to have a lot of great, great uh, baseball players as well as assistant coaches. So, baseball's a team game. So those those wins are all because of those people. Now I know you said that the years kind of start to mix in after a while. It's been five years. Since that big tournament run in 2013, mm -hmm. you guys made it all the way to the NCAA tournament. Do you think anything about your program or your style? Maybe the culture of BG baseball has changed a little bit since then? Well, you know, I want to say the, the kids are, are probably a little bit different and everything, but, uh, you know, there's still that great passion for the game. The, the, the kids uh, really work hard, um, but, uh, you know, we, we do have to change our, I guess, our philosophies a little bit. You know, I'm not quite as, as tough as I used to be in my, my younger days. You know, I, I hear that a lot from my alumni when they come back. Oh, coach, you got soft on us and, and everything. But that's just kind of the nature of, of society nowadays. And so we just kind of adjust and, uh, and hopefully things work out. So nearly 30 years ago when you came to the Orange and Brown for the first time, it wasn't exactly a great time in BG baseball coming off seven years without a winning record. Since then, 13 winning seasons, including 11 straight seasons, 20 or more wins. How did you change up the culture so much to bring in the atmosphere of winning and in such a quick fashion? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I guess I, <laughs> I was used to winning, you know, from little league days uh, through uh, middle school, high school, college, professional baseball, and, you know, it's in my blood. And, uh, you know, I, I be honest with you, Leo, I, I don't like to lose. I, I, I hate to lose, okay? I love to win, but I, you could multiply that by a thousand, and that's how much I hate to lose. And that's the type of passion we want our kids to have, that any time we take the field, okay, we, we, we're representing uh, not only BGSU, the athletic department, our program, but, uh, you know, our alumni and friends of those programs, and we, we want to make them proud each and every time we step out there. We've talked about a lot of numbers already. Uh, in this sit down, but I'm sure the number that you are the most proud of is the 671 wins because you always talk to me about how baseball is a team game and no one man makes a team. And with that being the case, you know, how have you been able to, and, and it's taken a while, but no 700 win plateau comes very quickly. So, how have you been able to go where very few college coaches have gone before? I make sure my office door is closed, <laughs> so, so no, you can knock on it, knock on it, and say, "Get the heck out of here, coach." So, and everything. But no, again, the the credit, Leo, goes. It really does. It goes to the players, and it just, uh, you know, we started with the philosophy that uh, you know we wanted to keep as many hometown products as we could, you know, to to join our program. We felt that was very, very important to. Uh, to uh, keep those kids home, to allow family and friends, allow the communities to come out and support us. And, and we've been very blessed with the crowds that we get out there. But, you know, I'm talking about the Andy Tracys and the Mike Holmes, you know, they were kind of Chris Boggs, you know, those are all local guys that uh, ended up helping us win our first championship in 1995. And, uh, you know, we've kind of kind of lived on that philosophy and we, we tried the best. We don't keep them all home but we try our best, you know, and then we branch out from there. So, uh, so it's, it's, been a good, uh, it's, it's been a good run. You touched on some of your former players. Nolan Reimold, one of your former players, was recently inducted into the BGSU Athletic Hall of Fame, and he, of course, spent a few seasons under you. What do you remember most about his time as a Falcon? Five-tool player. I'll tell you what, uh, like I said, we've I mentioned some other guys who were really, really good players. Nolan was a five-tool player. You know, he could hit, run, hit for power, hit for average. <laughs> he could throw, um, just, uh, just a big-time player. And, uh, you know, it was pretty amazing when you, when I would go watch the Orioles play, whether he'd come into Detroit or if I was in Baltimore and stuff and go watch Nolan play and just, man, how he looked like a big leaguer. And, uh, yeah, a very talented guy, a very humble guy, quiet guy, and uh, 
you know, if anybody was at the Hall of Fame reception, okay, listening to Nolan's speech, you know, it was kind of a very dry humor speech, but kind of, kind of funny, and, uh, but just a, a great guy, and, uh, you know, he, I'll tell you what, I believe, if my memory serves me correct, I think he's the highest drafted uh, player second round out of uh, BGSU baseball history. And there's been some great ones, you know, you got, uh, you got Oral Hershiser, you got Roger McDowell, you got uh, Doug Bear, you know, just to name a few off the top of my head, you know, and, uh, you know, so to be that, uh, that top, top of a pick uh, shows you what type of player he was. You talked about Burke Badenhop earlier, you got a chance to catch up with him last year when we were in North Carolina. Does it help you on your recruiting to say to uh, potential players, hey, I mean, this is no pushover, we've got... Burke Badenhop, we got Nolan Rymel, we got all these guys who have been in a major league uniform. First thing that comes out of our mouth, Leo, <laughs> when it comes to recruiting. No, because that, that's huge. I mean, that's those are the type of players we want. We want guys that uh, you know want to come to Bowling Green, get their education, get their degrees, win championships here, and then go to the next level, okay, and make it to the big league. So yeah, no doubt about it. We mentioned about Burke. We mentioned about uh, Nolan, Andy Tracy. Uh, you know, we have John Birdie, who's uh, in the minor leagues right now. We mentioned him also, and uh, you know, so yeah, that's that's a big part of recruiting. No doubt about that. Well, I'm glad you brought up John Birdie because, as you know, obviously he played here for the Falcons for a little while, and a lot of people know that. But what they don't know is John is your nephew, and I mean, how cool is that to get a chance to? coach your own flesh and blood out on the field. Oh, it was very cool, so, and everything. I told my sister she had to give me 50 bucks, so, to take him on the team. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, no, just, a, again, a great young man. I, I'll tell you what, uh, John plays the game the way it's supposed to play, uh, be played. He is a fiery guy. You know, he, he takes after his uncle. I mean, he really does, and takes after his dad. His dad uh, actually played a couple of years in the Tiger organization, and, uh, you know, so he's, he has good bloodlines, and but uh, he's actually back working out with us now. He just resigned uh, recently with Toronto because mm -hmm. he was a six-year free agent, and uh, he uh, he'll be back in the Blue Jay organization. So he's been working out with the team, and it it's been great because you know that's what we want our guys. We want our guys being surrounded by pro guys and being able to go ahead and pick their brains and any way that uh, John can uh, share some information that'll help our guys get better. That's that's a good thing for our program. Only one change to your coaching staff for this year. Dallas Burke is out, Ryan Foster is in, and he brings a lot of good experience to this team. What did you see in him that made you kind of say, you know what, hey, i got to have this guy on my staff? Well, I'll tell you what, when uh, Dallas left, he left late in the summer, okay, so now all of a sudden we're scrambling to try to find somebody, you know, so we, we get it out online that we have a vacancy, and uh, and Ryan had some interests. Uh, we spoke with him on the phone to begin with, uh, caught our interest with his experience, with his enthusiasm, brought him on campus, wanted to show him around, uh, get a chance to meet face to face. And uh, we knew when he came on campus that he was the, the right person for us. And uh, just doing a terrific job. And uh, our catchers really seemed to enjoy him. Uh, he's assistant Ryan Shea, my other assistant coach with the hitters. And uh, they're doing a great job. You guys barely missed out on the MAC tournament last year, it was a heartbreaker in those last couple of games. Did that kind of give you a little bit of motivation for this year, like, all right, we got to push it a little bit harder. If we're going to be on the bubble like that, not that you obviously want to be on the bubble, you want to be at the top of the conference, but did that kind of give you a little extra motivation for this year? Well, I would certainly hope so. If I was a player, there's no doubt about it. I, you know, I can speak for the coaching staff. It does, you know, but hopefully from the player standpoint, uh, yes, and that was, that was kind of tough because uh, – you know, we we did. We we actually played pretty good, you know, and, uh, you know, baseball's a funny game and life's a funny game. And, uh, you know, you kind of get get snake bit every once in a while. And that, but that's life. That's baseball. You battle through it. So, unfortunately, we tied for, for uh, you know, the last playoff spot, but, uh, you know, fell short on the tiebreaker there against that school up north, which really <laughs> made it worse and stuff. Because that's our ultimate goal. We want to make the conference tournament. And, this year it's a little bit different because with Buffalo dropping out of the conference now, we go from an eight-team tournament down to six. So, uh, so you know, there's uh, two teams that are used to getting in there aren't going to be getting in there anymore. So we're going to have to really, really uh, tighten up the belt buckle and go after it. Let's talk about your personal history on the diamond for a minute. A lot of people know about you being in the Yankees organization, but they may not know that in 1976, after the College World Series, you were handpicked to represent the USA as a captain for a team that went overseas to play national teams like Korea and Taiwan. Would you put that towards the top of the list of 
baseball memories or achievements for you? Uh, no doubt about it. I think when we're all young, oh yeah, we're going to travel the world and do, <laughs> you know, take these, uh, you know, go around visit all these countries and stuff. And I was very blessed. Yeah, I, I was fortunate that I had a had a very good uh, college World Series. Uh, the people from the the USA uh, uh, committee uh, were there in attendance. Okay, uh, invited myself and also. Uh, a teammate from Eastern Michigan, Bob Welch, was also on there, and Bob, God rest him, uh, passed away a few years ago, but uh, um, what a great experience that was. I'll tell you what, to go ahead and travel to, uh, to Korea and Taiwan and play baseball over there. Um, Ozzie Smith was actually my roommate, you know, which was really pretty, pretty cool. And heck, Ozzie was doing backflips back then, <laughs> you know, taking his position. And uh, so the, no doubt about it. Uh, played with a lot of great guys over there, great memories, and, uh, you know, something I'll cherish the rest of my life. You spent eight years in the minors. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you were never able to get called up to the big leagues. We talked about it last year. You said your time in the MILB very valuable, you wouldn't replace it for anything. Are there any lessons or things that you still carry with you from your time in the minor leagues? Well, with minor leagues, um, you know, I can't say it's the easiest lifestyle, especially if you have a family. Um, and, uh, but as far as the, the baseball part, man, I, I love the game. I love playing and, uh, you know, I think uh, with eight, the movie Eight Men Out, you know, I think they, I think it was Shoeless Joe Jackson said something, but heck, I would have played for free, you know, and everything. That's a, that was my love and passion for the game. But, you know, I knew right when I was in middle school exactly what my goals were going to be. You know, I wanted to go ahead, go to high school, make the varsity team from there earn a college scholarship, go play, which I did uh, at Eastern Michigan. From there, I wanted to go on to pro ball. And uh, though I didn't make it to the big leagues, you know, uh, you know, I, I can say I looked at myself, I can look at myself in the mirror and know I gave everything that I possibly could to get there. Played with and against some, some great players, you know, Hall of Fame players, you know, whether it was uh, Cal Ripken Jr., uh, Kirby Puckett, uh, Wade Boggs, just, just to name a few. Uh, like I said, Ozzie Smith was a teammate of mine and everything. So I was very, very fortunate. So I, there's not one thing I would, uh, would change at all with that. 1980, you played under Stump Merrill, mm -hmm. the famous and often scrutinized former Yankee manager. Did he teach you anything about coaching and how to run a team? Well, you know what, I'll, t I'll tell you what, Stump was a, was a, a player's guy. We, we enjoyed playing for Stump. Um, he wasn't afraid, afraid to try different things, you know. I can remember a playoff game against the Expos uh, AA team when I was in Nashville, and uh, they were in Memphis, and they had a really good club. They had a lot of future uh, uh, Major League players on that team, and uh, Tim Raines was actually one of them, and uh, he... <laughs> It was late in the game, and uh, we had two closers. We had Will McEnany, who actually uh, was uh, pitched for the Cincinnati Reds for the big red machine and won a World Series and um, ended up in the Yankee organization, ended up in double-A with us. So we had Will McEnany, and we had another uh, right-handed closer. Will was left-handed, uh, Paul Boris was a right-hander. And uh, he had Paul in the game first and then decided, well, the lefties are coming up, so he wanted to bring Will in, but he didn't want to lose Paul for the game. So he put Paul, uh, Paul out in right field, okay, and Will gets in there and he gets a routine fly ball, and guess where it was hit? <laughs> it was hit to right field. And, of course. And do you think Paul Boris caught that ball? Sure. He did not. And we had a big lead, you know, going to that game. I think we were up like 9-2 to two or something going into the last inning, and they ended up tying it up. And... Uh, you know, we ended up winning uh, in the bottom of the ninth, thank God, you know, to extend the series and, and everything. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of funny how the, the fans came out the next day and kind of showed their displeasure to, to Stump and everything. And he just laughed about it, you know. And, uh, you know, even the front office of the Yankees were there, and they kind of chuckled. Yeah, Stump, we, you know, we like to see everybody play, but I don't know, you might want to think that one over again. So, so you know, that's what you got to do. You got to have fun, and you got to have uh, – you know, you you got to have, uh, you know, the knowledge that, uh, you know, that, you know, that you're going to win and, and everything. And that's that's what we did. So, you know, even if we would have lost the game, we would have been ready to go the next day. So now 1985, the Twins made you their manager for their Class A affiliate in the California League. Mm -hmm. Very next year, you led them to the championship series mm -hmm. where you fell just short. But with that success that you had in the minor leagues, as far as managing, in those couple of years. What made you then switch over to college a few years later? 
family, no doubt about it. Uh, we had uh, two children at that time, and uh, our son Spencer uh, just started school, and our daughter was uh, Jamie's three years younger than Spencer, four years younger than Spencer. And, uh, you know, I would have to leave the end of February to head to spring training, okay, then uh, be out, uh, out in California, Visalia, California, which is a long way from uh, Garden City, Michigan, and everything. And uh, uh, it just got to, be, it got to be too much, okay, being away from the family that much and stuff. I, my wife and I had children to raise our children. And, uh, you know, it's one thing if you're making the money like they make in the big leagues, but in the minor leagues you don't make that kind of money. And in fact, when my season ended as a manager, my wife, I'd come home, she goes, okay, you got one week, now go find a job. <laughs> so, but that's true. I mean, you only got paid for the months that you worked in the minor leagues and everything. So, and again, I would not trade one, one single day of that either because of my love, but uh, no, we, we had a family to raise our children and, uh, and I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change that for anything either. You brought up your son, Spencer, who's currently an assistant coach up in Epsilani mm -hmm. at Eastern Michigan. That's a position that you yourself previously held. Do you think you could ever see him joining you here in BGSU? Well, he did for a while. And, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, they, uh, in fact, to be honest with you, when Spencer was here, we had five of our, five of our six years were probably the best years we've had here. And unfortunately, you know, due to the state, uh, state law with nepotism, okay, he wasn't allowed to coach for me anymore. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, he left uh, Bowling Green after we won the tournament in 2013, which you mentioned. Okay, he had to leave after that year and uh, went to Akron for a year. And then uh, he's been at Eastern now. I believe this is maybe his fourth year there. So, and he's a great young coach. Uh, you know, I know I'm a little biased, but great young man. And, uh, He's really helped to turn the, the Eastern Michigan program around because they were really struggling a lot bo like Bowling Green was when I took over. And, uh, and so I'm very proud of him. Um, you know, I'll definitely cherish the years that not only he played here, but the years that he helped coach here and helped us to have all the success that we did. Last question for you, Coach. What are your expectations for your team this year? Well, we want to win. I'll tell you what, uh, I told the guys uh, the last two years, uh, I've had enough of the losing to <laughs> last me a lifetime. So, uh, you know, but we're, you know, in, in all fairness to those teams too, we were young, you know, and I'm not making excuses, but it is what it is. So um, I believe we have seven seniors on this year's club, which is uh, probably three, uh, three or four more than we've had the two previous years. And, you know, but the, it's the underclassmen. So the junior class is going to play heavy on that. Um, you know, the sophomores now because they played as freshmen. And then I, I really like our, our freshman class and our first year class. We brought in four junior college guys. And I think they're really going to make an impact right away, which is, which is going to be huge. But, uh, you know, we have some local products. Uh, you know, we have Dylan DeHannis and Adam Furness and uh, Evan Brown. So uh, DeHannis and Furness are from Bowling Green High School. And uh, Evan Brown is from Anthony Wayne. And, uh, you know, we, we really like, uh, like the talent of, of these young kids. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be like Guardy and be able to, to develop them a little bit and get them out there to help us out right away. I sure hope so. Coach? Nothing but luck in the rest of the season, and have fun out there. Well, thank you, Leo. Appreciate you having me.